Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Freddy Acosta. I am an organic farmer and entrepreneur. I believe that 21st century farmers deserve financial freedom. And in order to do that, a farmer should think like a business person, speak like a business person, and dress like a business person. This is my journey, and I wish to share it with you. Absolutely no secrets. Everything you need to know about organic farming will be discussed here. Now, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to click the subscribe button, including the bell button, so that you will be notified if there will be new videos that will be uploaded in our channel. And if this video uh, will benefit you, don't forget to like and share as well. So for today, we're going to talk about my urban integrated organic demo farm here in Nairobi. Now we have to understand that I don't have background in uh, agriculture, in farming. In fact, I'm a computer engineer by training. But one thing, I grew up in the farm when I was young. About five or six years ago, I developed this sense of interest and passion in farming. So in order to uh, reskill myself and to learn new technologies, I went back home to the Philippines and attended a seven-day training program at Costales Nature Farms. So I stayed in the farm for seven days and uh, in the morning we have classroom sessions. In the afternoon we have hands-on exercises, uh, uh, farm activities. And one thing that we learned in, in this program is that we, we learned the new technology and we learned the business side and the management side about the integrated organic farm. So when I came back to Kenya, I copied the principle, including all the uh, best practices but because I don't have big land here in Kenya, I created somehow a small-scale urban integrated organic demo farm. Okay, So by definition, when you say integrated organic farm, it's a whole farm management system which aims to deliver a more sustainable agriculture. It involves attention to details, and continuous improvement in all areas of a farming business through informed management process. It combines the best of modern tools and technologies with traditional and natural practices. So, the first component in my integrated organic farm in Nairobi is I have a rabbit tree. All right? So, raising rabbits actually is very simple and economical. According to studies, if you have two does and one buck, and to say two females and one male, you should be able to produce about 180 pounds of meat per year. I have nine female or nine does. Okay? Again, according to literature, you know, the same amount of feeds, by the way, uh, that will be given to rabbits, the same amount of feed given to cows. According to literature, you should be able to produce more meat, okay, rabbit meat than uh, beef. So they eat almost everything. I feed them with my kitchen vegetable waste, forage crops, and dry hay. Plus, of course, since I cannot grow everything, I cannot produce everything, somehow I complement, supplement with pellets. So they are a very good source of manure, in fact and their manure is very rich in nitrogen. So, rabbit meat is considered as healthy white meat. In fact, it's a constant supply of protein for my family. So the main client is, of course, my family. I also sell to my neighbors and friends at $7 per kilogram. The second component of my demo farm is I have a vermiculture area wherein I use worms to decompose organic food waste, turning the waste into nutrient-rich material. We call it the vermicast. 
capable of supplying necessary nutrients to help sustain plant growth. So this method is very simple, effective, convenient, and noiseless. It saves also a lot of water, energy, landfills, and helps rebuild the soil. So these were my original worm beds. So I'm using styro and other uh, containers. Eventually, I have to uh, come up with another way of uh, keeping worms. So this is my new worm bins designed for worm migration and direct collection of vermicas and worm juice at the bottom. So once worm consume the food from one crate, they will just migrate to another crate and then I collect the vermicas. So this is how I, I collect them. All right. So I, I am the main uh, user of my fertilizer because I also plant vegetables and other crops. And I also sell to my neighbors and friends who are maintaining a small scale garden. I sell, uh, you know, 50 cents per kg. And this is the worm juice, okay, which I collect at the bottom. I, it's very concentrated. You have to dilute this one, uh, 5 to 10 percent only of this juice, and then 90 to 95 percent water. All right, very concentrated, very good to fertilize the soil as well. I also sell at two dollars per liter. Now that I have fertilizer, then I can grow vegetables. Look at my organic eggplant, again for family consumption. If, if you notice, I'm using uh, buckets, containers, and including uh, water, use water bottles. Okay, so uh, observe, notice how healthy my plants. Okay? Now, they said that in Nairobi, in Kenya, we can plant ginger. In fact, I'm planting ginger, okay? Uh, I have plenty of ginger in my front yard, in my backyard. Again, for family use only. One kg of ginger in the supermarket is about $3.5, okay? So, now, the secret is in the soil, right? The secret is in the soil. Look at my ginger. And I have also uh, I also have organic turmeric with only one plant. Imagine the amount of G, uh, turmeric that I have harvested. And I also plant organic tomatoes, by the way. So direct from the farm, more tomatoes. Again, no chemicals, no pesticides whatsoever. Pure organic tomatoes. Now salad is not complete without Cucumber. So I plant cucumber on my crates, right? So if you notice, they're very prolific. I also have organic lemongrass. Now this lemongrass I use for tea. I will also use this one in, uh, when we are cooking a stew, especially when we are cooking also matumbo or the stomach, okay, of the big cow to neutralize the smell, right? So some leaves that I cannot use, I feed my rabbits. Now, organic oregano. Now, well, oregano is a very healthy plant, by the way. In fact, seven leaves of oregano contain antioxidant equivalent to 52 apples, 30 potatoes, 12 oranges, four carrots, and one half cup of blueberries. Now, I use organic oregano uh, for the common colds and cough of the children. So I'll boil three, four leaves in a one liter of water. And then after that, I put uh, lemon and honey and then give to the children when they have colds and cough. And of course, I also grow spring onions, dragon fruit, and grand pepper. So this is my dragon fruit in my backyard. It's already mature. At that time when I took this picture, my dragon fruit is already about two years old. In fact, for the second year, I harvested about 40 fruits of my dragon fruit. Now this dragon fruit is very healthy. 
it is very rich in uh, uh, antioxidant properties. Okay, very good for people with constipation, high blood pressure, and uh, uh, how do you to regulate also blood sugar, and so on. Scientifically proven. Now. Uh, since I have animals, I also grow forage crops. First and foremost, I have super napier, or it's pachong, from Thailand. The local super napier is only about 8% protein. This super napier, or pachong, is about 18% protein. Very rich in protein. Very good for animals, cows, goats. Okay, for my rabbit, and so on. I also grow um, water spinach, but this one is for our stew. So we normally use this vegetable when we are cooking fish and other meat. Now this is tricantera. Tricantera is 30% uh, protein. Is I use this one to feed my rabbit. Now, remember, I have uh, earthworms. Now, earthworms have a lifespan only about 12 months to 14 months. Now, instead of them going to waste when they die, I built a one meter by two meters, you know, pond where I had organic catfish. Right? And these plants floating on the surface. They are called azola. Azola, again, is very rich in protein, about 30% protein. Now, this azola can be fed to tilapia, chicken, goats, cows, pigs, okay? A source of protein. Uh, this is my catfish. They are about two or three months old at that time. And lately, I have harvested them and we enjoyed Catfish is another source of protein for the family. Now, I still have plenty of worms. So I told myself, okay, let's just have one uh, chicken. Uh, I couldn't uh, uh, have, I can't have more than one chicken because uh, if you remember, I'm living in, staying in a neighborhood and uh, Sometimes they make a lot of noise, but uh, enough to have one egg for my omelette every day. So this is me with my chicken. Now, the only reason why I could do all these things in an urban setting is because of a Japanese technology called the EM technology, right? So I produce my own organic pesticide, antibiotic, growth promotant, amino acid, and so on and so forth. Now, people come to the house, by the way, to learn these things that I'm doing. And uh, I charge visitors $10 per person as they visit me and I show them everything that I'm doing. So that now they can copy and implement in their own farm as well. So I've conducted a two-day seminar on integrated organic agriculture in Arusha, Tanzania. Uh, I demonstrated with them how to, you know, uh, formulate emas and other concoct concoctions. This is a two-day seminar on integrated organic agriculture in Nairobi, Kenya. One time I conducted another seminar on organic pig farming at Strathmore Business School. The second day was a farm visit and hands-on exercise. In fact, I consulted for a pig farmer who wanted organic farming instead of the conventional farming after attending the seminar. This is a farm somewhere in Kiambu. Look at how they raise pigs. The condition of the pigs are very pathetic, very dirty, smelly. So I consulted for this pig farmer. I went as far as Lagos, Nigeria. So I consulted for a pig farmer who wanted to convert to organic farming as well. Now a student of mine was 
heard about what I'm doing, invited me to go to Kigali, Rwanda, and assisted her aunt. So that now we can help control ammonia and reduce the cost of feeds and increase egg production. Now, aunt has about 10,000 chicken. Right? And lastly, a former student of mine has visited my backyard and he saw my one meter by two meters fish pond and he copied it when he went back to Kitale, Kenya. Now, this place is here in the border of Kenya and Uganda. And he built big fish ponds. Right? So that's all for today. So if again, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and click that uh, bell button so that you will be notified if we're going to have new uh, videos. And if you bene benefited from this video and you like it, kindly click that like and, sh and share it as well. So thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day and God bless you.